What's up guys? First and foremost, before we get into the video, booking season. If you want to book a visit with the one and only Brett Smith to come to your property, now is your chance. <laughs> All jokes aside, guys, um, it is booking season. This is the time of year in which we try to get people on the calendar to uh, to get these visits in. Um, everywhere from New, ha New Hampshire to Kansas last year, if you want to figure out how to pull more bucks off your neighbor's property, get rid of the nocturnal bucks, uh, where to put the trail cameras, tree stands, what to plant, how to plant, when to plant, timber stand improvement, whitetaillandmanager at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. We'll get you taken care of. How to kill post-rut bucks, guys. Like I'm going to be honest with you. I should probably whisper this. This might be like the best time to kill a big buck because I hate to say it, everybody's burnt out at this point. Everybody takes the pre rut serious. I'm guilty of it. Everybody takes the rut serious. I'm guilty of it. And by about November 15th, and I'm not necessarily including Michigan on this one because Michigan's got that gun season and a goofy time period. Sorry, Michigan people, but there are some other ones too. But people are starting to wind down. They're getting worn out. And even if they do hunt that opening weekend, if it is a gun season, you know, by the second weekend, the 20s, the 30s of November, 30th of November, things are starting to dwindle down. Um, so at the end of the day, just in general, without even getting into the tips that I'm going to give you guys today on how to kill a buck during this time frame, it's a good time just to get your ass in the woods, guys, because nobody else is really going to be out there or not as many people, a very small percentage, because guys are flat out worn out. So now is a time, great time to get out there. Don't be afraid to, in future years, maybe even book some extra vacation days, two, three days around this Thanksgiving time period, give or take five days on either side of it, because nobody else really is, depending on the state and where your gun season is is and things like that um, guys are just flat out worn out so when it comes to killing these i'll call it late rut or post rut bucks guys there are a couple things that i do and i'll call this phase uh let's call it november 23rd through even really honestly depending where you are even december 8th so if we're falling somewhere in this time frame and give or take a little on either side of it guys honestly there are some t absolute tactics that i use when it comes to um, finding post rut bucks and even maybe finding some survivors which we're going to get more into in, in some future videos like these survivor bucks how do you find them um and some of those main tactics that, that I try to focus on, especially the main one, is I refocus and rehone in on my scrapes, guys. You know you've heard me say this a billion times, guys, but there are like two scrapes that I'm super worried about. The one on the food source and the one in the destiny, or next to the, the bedding area, the first scrape outside the bedding. Because now I'm going to pick him up on that first one when he comes out. I'm going to catch him on that last one when he's headed out to the food source. And now I've got his route figured out pretty much. And maybe he, he meanders off a little bit. But at the end of the day, he's going to be hitting these scrapes big time because now he's looking for that last doe or that second doe that's starting to come into estrus or those fawns that are now of the appropriate weight to the point where they can come into estrus. So if I had to be honest with you guys, I'm focusing on scrapes a lot more than I was the uh, 3rd of November through really the, the 15th because they're not nearly as focused on the scrapes at that point because they are focused on the does because they are locked down with the does, breeding these does, chasing these does. They're not searching for them. So now this is a time period in which obviously we've seen that bell curve of peak breeding taking place on November 15th in which they begin to search again because there are less options. So what does that mean? It means they have to go to these core areas or, or these actual scrapes to check in and see, hey, who's still in estrus? Who didn't get bred the first round? Who's coming into estrus? And if we can focus on the scrapes right next to the bedding and also right next to the food, the rest of the movement is gonna take care of itself. Really, I know we all love to run, run 500 trail cameras, guilty of it, but you only need two in this given scenario. Hunt, I mean, put one on the scrape closest to the bedding and one closest to the food. Another thing that I'm gonna focus on when it comes to um, hunting this time of year is the rub line. So here's the thing. There's random rubs everywhere, but if we can figure out where the rub line is and kind of make sense of it because we know where the food and the bedding is, um, at the end of the day, what we've learned because they've laid down the sign and literally showed us is the uh, transition area and the travel route to and from that a lot of times these deer are, are traveling just to find breeding partners. And in between there will be scrapes, obviously, but we don't always have to sit on the scrape. I do like to, but these scrape lines, or excuse me, these rub lines might be on the down, downwind side of bedding. Um, they might be, they might be on a, on a food source. At the end of the day, they're in places in which these bucks frequented quite often in the pre-rut when they really focused on laying down sign, and they were doing that for a reason. It's because that those are the areas in which the does were. And so now, if I had to be completely honest with you and transparent with you guys, we're hunting the post-rut a lot like we're hunting the pre-rut. 
that that mediocre middle phase i don't think a lot of guys change their tactics sometimes and that's why somebody some people have that november lull that november 3rd you keep sitting in that same spot you sat in october 25th and it's different things are happening but now if you're the guy that just stuck it out and stuck it out and chances are you probably got tired and you're not out there for the post rut but let's say you are now all of a sudden your spot let's say you never moved from october 25th you had the same spot starts to get really good again because the same things are happening on a little bit um a little bit less um, intense, um, a little bit less, just less intense, uh, basically less intense pre-rut is happening again. Like another round of does are starting to come in. The last remaining does that didn't get bred yet are still in. It's that time period in which those bucks are just trying to find those does. So at the end of the day, guys, I want you to focus on scrapes, the important scrapes, not random scrapes. And if you don't know, like go out and figure it out this time of year. You're already kind of desperate. You're getting to the point of the season where it's getting a little bit harder to kill a buck. Get your butt out there and scout and figure out what's where. But at the end of the day, pay attention to these scrapes. Pay attention to these rub lines, especially on the downwind side of bedding areas. Um, that's going to show you uh, the direction which these deer are moving, especially once we get into double-sided rubs. You know they're going both ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just fo focus on those rub lines because those are transition areas or areas in which these bucks are frequenting. Um, just searching for does once again. And at the end of the day, if I had to give you one major tip, guys, go back to the same tactics that you used October 25th give or take, around November 25th. And if you do that, I bet you find a post-rut buck.